Hello, my friend. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Michael, and I am out on this glorious spring evening on a mission to photograph great crested greaves. I'm here at a new spot where I've never shot before. I only just scouted it a couple of days ago, but I'm pretty excited because it has a lot of potential. It's a really interesting area. It's kind of a, a big marsh, but it used to be a peat marsh, you know, where they would dig out peat. So there's all these old peat pits that have now filled with water and become pools. And um, last time I was here, I saw about, I guess, like four pairs of greaves, and a couple of them were hanging out in some of the smaller pools, which means it's a lot easier to get close to them. Plus, this place offers, you know, free access to the water so you can get that super, super low perspective. So, <laughs> as you can hear, I'm pretty excited. I always get excited about stuff like this and I'm hoping for the best, but I'm also trying to keep my expectations real low because that uh, to me is like the best way of staying sane <laughs> when you're coping with <laughs> disappointment. But uh, follow along with me tonight and we'll see if the Greaves want to cooperate. So I got uh, like an hour and a half left before sunset, so the light is going to get really nice soon, and yeah, that's great. Uh, the only problem about being here in the evening is that uh, it's light out, so I'm a little bit concerned if I'll be able to kind of get into position without scaring them, uh, both because I don't want to scare them and also because <laughs> I, I want to be stealthy so I can get my photos, but uh, yeah, just got to try and see what happens. Getting close to the spot where I saw the, uh, the greaves the last time. It's right around the corner here. Uh, so I am getting ready <laughs> to go into stealth mode and to you know, keep my eyes peeled and my ears unplugged, I guess you would say, uh, for any sign of the greaves there. Because uh, what I don't want to do is just kind of walk in there and just stumble upon them and scare them. So yeah, I got to focus now. out of the water right in front of me so I kind of ended up doing exactly what I said I wasn't going to do a second ago I kind of walked right in there and well I didn't scare it but I'm pretty sure sure it saw me so I'm just trying to stand completely still now and wait for it to dive again so I can move a little bit further in the right direction It's been such a good session so far. Uh, I, of course, don't really know for certain until I get home, but I think I've got some of the best Great Crested Greep shots I've ever gotten. I'm showing the back here. I'm very happy right now.
I am feeling so good right now and I'm so, so grateful for this session I had tonight. It was so much fun and definitely the best session I've had so far this year with the uh, Great Crested Greaves. This spot is awesome. I'm definitely gonna come back a lot here. One of the Greaves just kept like paddling around right in front of me doing its thing, coming in really close. So, well, I'll have to get the f photos up on my computer, but I think I've gotten some of the sharpest, most detailed close-ups uh, I've ever gotten. So that's really exciting and the light was beautiful, the reflections were beautiful. It was just such a, such a great evening. Uh, the mate did come in to the same pool as I was shooting the other one on, but unfortunately they didn't do any displays, you know. Uh, you know, they they do all this stuff where they rub their uh, chests together and they, they mimic each other's movements and stuff. And I've gotten that at a distance, but not close up. So I was hoping for that, but it didn't work. And the, um, the, the, the Greaves uh, went over to a different pool now. And the light sucks now anyway, so I'm gonna call it a night. And I'm just gonna be really grateful for this and then hope next time I can get some of the interactions uh, between them. But uh, join me for the uh, after video thing I'm gonna do now and I'll walk you through kind of the setup and the gear I used if you're curious about that. Alrighty, let's have a quick look at the gear and overall setup I used for the shoot with the Great Crested Greaves the other evening. I'll start by talking about the camera gear and then we'll move over to the stealth uh, camouflage equipment afterwards. If you have any questions, any comments, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer. Um, let's start with the kind of most iconic piece of wildlife photography equipment, the super telephoto lens. So I'm a lucky man because I own the Nikon 400mm f2.8 prime lens. I absolutely love this thing, it's stellar. I've had quite a few different Nikon lenses and this thing is, is by far the best lens I've ever shot with. It's so fast, it's so precise and uh, so sharp and also it's very versatile because it's one of the few Nikon lenses that performs really well with teleconverters on there. It even works very very well with the 2x converter on there and i've never experienced that before image quality and kind of focus speed does take a hit but it's still absolutely usable so effectively that means that with this lens you you have you know going from a range of 400 2.8 all the way up to an 800 millimeter uh, f5.6 for the most part i have the 1.4 converter on there it gives me a focal range of 560 millimeter uh, at f4 which is just a great kind of mid-range for most wildlife photography. And with the 1.4 on there, I honestly cannot tell the difference in image quality and performance. So it's usually glued on there. And that's what I was using also with the Greaves the other night. I mainly take it off when I need more light or if I'm you know, shooting a bigger subject, I'm really close and I need you know, a little bit more uh, in the frame there, then I'll take it off. Otherwise it just sits on there. Amazing lens, I love this thing. As far as camera, I was using my Nikon Z6 II, and uh, I love this camera, I really do. And I, you know, in almost all think thinkable situations, I'd prefer this over, you know, a DSLR like the D850. And I realize that's a controversial statement. People get emotional about this stuff. So uh, I want to say right away that it, it obviously depends on your shooting style. For my shooting style, I find the Z6 II vastly superior in many ways to a DSLR. I'm going to do a separate video with a review of the Z6 II, specifically for wildlife photography. I don't want to get into the weeds on that right now. So I'll just cover the three main reasons why I found this to be the right camera for um, the shoot with the Great Crested Greaves the other night. The first thing being the electronic viewfinder, which lets me see the actual exposure through the viewfinder. And that, that has in general been a big game changer for me. And in tricky light, like the other night, you know, where, where the light is changing because we're approaching sunset, I'm, I'm constantly trying to micro adjust and get the best possible exposure, um, you know, uh, on the spot, uh, on the card. And, um, you know, with the DSLR, I'd, I'd constantly have to check on the back of the camera, I'd have to check the, the histogram and so on. Not with the mirrorless here, I can just do everything while looking in the viewfinder. And in a stealthy situation, that's, that's a massive advantage in my experience and in my opinion. Secondly, the silent shutter works really, really well on the Z6. Uh, you have full performance and you can still use the, the viewfinder. Only your frame rate takes a bit of a hit. And that's just such a pleasure because um, in a stealthy situation, if you're shooting a size shy subject, if you want the natural behavior, you know, for example, using the D850 is just, or any DSLR for that matter, it's just a very loud uh, shutter sound. And that does have an effect in my experience. You can completely avoid that with the Z6 
um, I, I realize that on DSLRs, obviously you can use live view and all that stuff to do silent photography. It's just not pack practical. It's, 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 it's annoying in my opinion, you know, and, and um, it's just a much better, better solution with the mirrorless. So in all stealthy situations, that's a, in my experience, a big advantage. And then video. If you're doing any kind of video at all, <laughs> mirrorless is the way to go. That's one of the main reasons why I wanted to, I was, well, I was curious to try mirrorless is because I was losing my mind trying to do video with DSLRs. You know, if something you know, like an owl that's sleeping, it'll acquire focus on and do fine video, anything that moves and it's just a nightmare, not with a mirrorless. It acquires focus and it locks on and, and tracks, you know, the subject very, very well. And also you can do video right through the viewfinder. And that's it's just it makes everything so much easier. And in a stealthy situation, that's a massive advantage. Love this camera. <laughs> then I used this embarrassingly simple and stupid uh, uh, ground pod here, which is literally just two boards I hammered together and then put a video head on there. Um, like the reason why I did that is I need a, I, in a situation like the one with the, the Greaves the other night, where it's already light and I have to be really fast to get in there when they are not paying attention. Yeah, setting up a tripod would be way too much of a hassle. This thing I just throw it on the ground, lens on, I'm ready to go. And, um, you know, I didn't want to use a video head because I wanted the steadiness and I wanted to be able to pan. I wouldn't be able to do that if I were using a beanbag or something like that. So that's kind of the story behind this, this guy here. Real quick, a uh, very inexpensive, uh, cheap, thin yoga mat. And I just brought that along because... Uh, it was wet and nasty out there, and although it's spring, it's still pretty cold. We get frost at night, so uh, just to keep a little bit dry and a little bit comfortable, I, I brought this this one here. Also, I knew I'd be lying there for at least an hour, so just to make things a little bit more comfortable. And this is so easy to roll out. Last but not least, the camouflage itself. Very, very simple solution, yet effective and also inexpensive. Just burlap material with the camo pattern on there. This has been the main camouflage I've been using for, I think, like a year and a half now especially for situations like this, uh, you know, where I'm getting in there, it's still light and I have to be really stealthy and fast. You know, if I were trying to set up a hide or something, I'd just draw so much attention to myself, it wouldn't make sense. And uh, this is just so versatile and easy to use. You might've noticed in the video, I had it over my shoulders and that's because just, just for speed. Uh, so, you know, the whole setup, basically, I, I see, I get my chance, the, the grip dives, I, I, I go as quickly as possible over to the spot I want to lay down, just throw this on the ground, camera on, or, or lens on that roll out the mat, and then pull this over me, and I'm ready to go. And then the cool thing about it is that it's, it covers me up nicely. It's, it's hard to see me behind it, but I can see out. I can pretty easily see through it. So in that sense, it's also uh, very practical because you don't have to have like an eyepiece or something like that cut out to be able to kind of see what you're doing. All right, that was the whole setup I used the other night. I hope you found that useful. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate it. And I hope you'll join me for the next one. If you subscribe to my channel and turn on the, the good old alerts, you'll know when my next video does come out. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.